Now, thank you for joining the webinar, and um, let's get started. Okay, um, it's a little bit strange to um, you know talking to a camera is. Um, I'll have to get used to it, but because you know I tend to look away from the camera today, I have something here. I have a police car right in front of the camera, so I can watch the camera. <laughs> So hopefully, um, uh, you'll see me talking right into the camera today. Okay? Oh, thank you. Okay, then let's get started. Oh, we've got 102 people now. So today, um, I'll be talking about grammar. And the title is Effective Grammar Lessons for EFL Children. And do you teach grammar, everyone? Yes? Yes, you teach grammar, yes. Okay, let me um, introduce myself. Um, some of you might have been to my um, webinars or offline seminars. Uh, my name is Sue, and I'm from Korea. Um, I like hiking and cooking. So can you look at this photo? I went to a small mountain um, about two weeks ago, and it was great. Mm. And look at these um, salads. Um, I made this salad last week. The top one is uh, bean sprout salad with some other vegetables. And the bottom one is, um, it's, it's a traditional Korean food, acorn jelly. Have you ever tried acorn jelly? Anyone? No? Yeah, um, so it's a, the brown thing is the acorn jelly, and you can mix it together with vegetables and put some soy sauce, and it's delicious. Okay, so um, what, where are you from, and what do you like? Can you um, write your answers on the chatting window? What do you like? What do you like doing? Yes, a oh, yoga, okay, singing and reading, uh, someone wants to eat uh, Korean barbecue, listening to music, dancing, dancing, travel, cooking, listening to music, wow, reading, well, I can see a lot of reading, making crafts, running, very good, okay, do you like cooking, anyone like cooking, swimming, yes, Watching sports, yes, I like watching sports. I like watching baseball. Listening to music, watching TV, reading, cooking. Okay, very good, good. So, oops. So here, let's look at this. Um, some of you are from uh, Latin America. I know some people are from Guatemala, Mexico City, and Bogota. Uh, it's 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. It's very late at night. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar. And Asia, it's 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Um, Beijing, 10 o'clock. Phnom Penh, 9 o'clock. Um, Seoul, Tokyo, 11 o'clock. Yes, 9 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, for, um, thank you again for joining the webinar. And let's go back to cooking. Okay? So some of you like cooking and I like cooking. So let's look at this. Can you look at the first sentence? I like cooking my family and my pets. It's scary, isn't it? I like cooking my family and my pets. Can you look at the picture? There's a pot, a very big pot, and there's fire. And yeah, something's inside, right? <laughs> it's very scary, right? Let's look at the um, second sentence. I like cooking my family, and my pets. Okay? So, um, this little comma makes a difference, right? The grammar is the foundation for clear communication. And with correct grammar, it's easier to understand. Okay, do you all agree? 
Yes? So we all agree that grammar is important. Yes, definitely, yes. Yes, so grammar is important, we all agree. Grammar is the system of a language. And grammar can help you to learn a language more efficiently. And grammar improves fluency. Right, we all agree. We all know that grammar is important. Yes. However, grammar is difficult. Do you agree? Now look at this picture. Look at this student. Do your students feel like this? Yes? Oh, a little? Yes, okay. And do you feel like this sometimes when you teach grammar? Or when you, prepare, when you prepare for your grammar lessons, do you feel like this? Absolutely, yes, okay. Yes, students, sometimes, yeah. So what can we do? Okay, so before we move on, let's do a little survey. Okay, now can you see this survey? I'm sharing the survey now. So could you please do the survey? Is grammar difficult to learn? Is grammar difficult to teach? Do you like teaching grammar? Do your students like grammar lessons? Okay, there are four questions. You can just click yes or no. Yes, I can see a lot of yes for number one and number two, number three, and number four. Okay, very good. So I'll give you um, one more minute to finish the survey. We have 127 people. Okay, now I'll finish the um, survey and let's share the result. Okay, can you see the result? So number one, is grammar difficult to learn? 86% said yes. Number two, is grammar difficult to teach? 77% said yes. Number three, do you like teaching grammar? 86% said yes. Oh, that's very good. That's very positive. Number four, do your students like grammar lessons? No for 75%. Okay, very interesting, right? So we all agree that grammar is difficult. It's difficult to learn, difficult to teach, but teachers like teaching grammar. However, students don't really like grammar lessons, right? That's the result of the survey. Very interesting. So today, um, I'll talk about these things, okay? Number one, ESL versus EFL. Number two, traditional approach versus communicative approach. And number three, why is it so difficult? Why is grammar so difficult for our students? Number four, how to make it more effective? How to make our grammar lessons more effective? Number five, link and review. Number six, spiral syllabus. Number seven, my first grammar lesson flow. And number eight, ebook and online resources. So these are the things that I want to talk about today. Okay, and if you have any questions, you can leave the questions on the um, chat window. Then at the end of the session, I'll look at the, the questions and then I'll try to answer at the end of the webinar. And I'll probably give you about five minutes so that you can ask me questions. Okay? 
So um, let's talk about ESL and EFL. Okay, if you look at the, um, the title of this, this webinar, it's Effective Grammar Lessons for EFL Children. Okay, EFL Children. And um, most of you, probably all of you are in EFL environment, right? Do you know what EFL stands for? Anyone? EFL? Yes? Okay, so EFL and ESL, that's different environment. So we need different approach. Yes, English as a foreign language. Yes, very good. Okay, so let's look at this um, chart. I compared um, ESL and EFL in the chart. Okay, so let's look at ESL first. English as a second language, so it's ESL. Okay, um, let's look at the example. A Japanese student learning English in USA. Okay, so that's ESL environment. Because the dominant language in USA is English, right? Everybody speaks English. All day, every day, everywhere, right? You go shopping, you speak English, you watch TV in English, and you talk to your friend in English. Okay, so everything is in English. So that's ESL environment. Okay, now let's look at EFL. English as a foreign language, EFL. Okay, so the example is a Japanese student learning English in Japan. Okay, a Korean student learning English in Korea. A Colombian student learning English in Colombia. A Mexican student learning English in Mexico, right? That's our environment. That's our situation, right? EFL is our environment. Because dominant language is not English, right? It's the native language. So in Japan, Japanese is the dominant language, right? In Mexico, Spanish is the dominant language, okay? So we um, use English only in the classroom during English class, right? That's probably the only time your students speak English. Is that true? Yes, right? So these two are um, very different, right? So in EFL environment, we need to do more link, more review, more practice, and more recycling, okay? Because the environment is totally different. In Korea, usually um, students have uh, three English classes per week, two or three English classes per week. In Japan, I think only one class per week, usually. And in other countries, you know, it's all different, right? But, um, yeah, but it's true that we only speak English in the classroom, maybe only two or three classes per week. Yeah. So, so we have to take a different approach for EFL environment. So what can we do? Let's find out. Okay? So um, let's talk about two different approaches. Okay? First of all, let's talk about traditional approach. Okay, this is how we teach grammar. It's traditional, but we still do this, right? So let's look at the first one. Oh, every day in Mexico. Okay, that's good. Having English class every day, that's perfect, right? So traditional approach. Um, grammar translation is probably the most popular method. Okay, you translate into your native language and then you explain in native language. Okay, I think most of us do this. I do this. And is that true? Do you do this? When you um, explain grammar, you um, explain in your own native language, right? Some teachers use um, a diagram, right? If you look at the diagram there, sentence diagram, use lines and words to show grammatical relationships, okay? So you analyze the sentence and you make a diagram to show the structure of the sentence to your students. Right? But it can be um, quite difficult 
if you look at this diagram, do you think your students can understand? Maybe some students can, but you know, it looks very difficult. Yes, I think grammar translation is probably the most popular method all around the world. Yes. So let's look at this sentence. The happy woman danced across the street. Okay, that's the sentence. And you can analyze the sentence like this. All right? Let's look at the next sentence. The woman who looked happy danced across the street. Okay, so we can analyze the sentence and you can show the diagram to your student. Let's look at next method. Memorization. Okay, so you memorize the rules and example sentences. I mean, this is very popular too, right? We have to memorize the rules. And repetition. You practice the forms by doing lots of exercises. So you do um, exercises again and again and, and again. Right? You repeatedly doing um, the exercises so that you can get used to the forms. Okay? Repetition is very uh, popular too. Okay? So, yeah, lots of drills, right? Drills, yes, yes. Yeah, lots of practice. Okay, so I'm not saying that these methods are bad. Okay, um, these are the popular methods that we use when we teach grammar. Okay, and when we teach English, when we teach grammar, it's there, there's not only one way that you can do, there are many ways that you can do, right? And you need to, um, because our environment is different because our situation is different um, because our students are different right we have to find a method that work best for our situation right so I'm introducing all these different methods okay so um, if you look at all these traditional methods uh, it's it's more or less teacher centered right so teacher explain and students listen and then they do the activities, they do the exercises, right? So it's teacher-centered. And there's no real communication, okay? You don't really um, have conversation in English using the grammar structure, right? And sometimes it's exam-focused, especially in Asian countries, right? You have to learn the grammar, you have to sit the test, Okay, and as your students get older, right, they'll have more exams, they have to pass, they have to get good grades, right? So that's why you have to do a lot of drill, repetition, and memorization. Okay, so it's exam focused. But that's all, oh, that's same in Latin America, okay? Yes, so it's everywhere, right? Yes. Okay, but that's the reality, right? So, so these are the methods that we use, right? Now let's look at um, something different. Let's look at communicative approach. Okay, so communicative approach is based on the idea that learning language successfully comes through having to communicate real meaning. Okay, so language is for communication. So that's the idea behind communicative approach. Okay, so um, communicative approach, you teach grammar in context, okay, and you do meaningful, communicative, and fun activities, and you use the language, you use the grammar structure, okay, and to have um, conversations, and to communicate, and connect to real life, and personalize. Okay, so the focus is on communication when you take communicative approach. Okay, this is student-centered, right? So, um, it's not always possible to apply communicative approach in our environment, right? It's not easy to do that. So, um, that's why we only do maybe traditional approach. 
Okay, but today I'll talk uh, more about communicative approach. So uh, maybe at the end of the session, you learn a few things about the communicative approach so that you can try with your students. Okay, of course, you know, we will have to um, keep doing the traditional approach, but maybe you can add, you know, a few things that you can do um, so that you can communicate with your students using the target grammar structure. Okay, so let's move on. So let's go back to um, the things that we talked about earlier. So why is it so difficult? Why is grammar so difficult? Why is it so difficult to teach? Why is it so difficult to learn? How can we make it more effective? Okay, remember this student? Okay, with help sign. So um, today, let's look at this picture. Teacher with a lot of hats, right? Teachers wearing a lot of hats. Can you look at some of the hats there? Um, coach, yeah, teachers sometimes have to be a coach. Parent, entertainer, yes, teachers sometimes have to entertain the students. Um, motivator. Yeah, we have all these different hats, right? Teachers wear all these different hats. Zookeeper, yes, I, I know. Why zookeeper? <laughs> yes. Event planner, yes, definitely, right? So I'll give you a new hat today to all of you teachers. Okay, I'll give you a hat. It's called student. Okay, so you can be a student today. Okay, so let's... Um, Look at the grammar problems from the student's point of view. Okay, so you will look at this um, webinar from the student's eyes. Okay, do you like that idea? Yes, okay, so now you can go back to um, your childhood. You are like seven years old, eight years old, nine years old. Okay, you will be Yes, okay, I can see a lot of yes and cool and yes, okay, okay, that's good. So um, you are a student today and everybody's very happy, that's good. Okay, so you are a student now and you look at this page in the book, have, has, and then a lot of explanations, okay? How do you feel? Do you want to read this? I mean, can you read? Do you understand? Do you think your students can understand this? Not really, right? Your students will say, I don't understand, right? You will say, I don't understand. You are a student now, right? You will say, I don't understand, teacher. It's too difficult. I can't read. Yes, you are seven years old. Yes, too much info, boring, right? So let's try to read it together. Okay, have, has. Have is the root verb and is generally used alongside the pronouns I, you, we, and they, and plural nouns. In general, have is a present tense word. Has is used alongside the pronouns he, she, it, and singular noun. In general, has is a present tense word. I don't think seven-year-old student can read this, right? So what can we do? What can we do? Maybe we can do this. Make it simple, right? Why don't we make it simple? Why don't we reduce all that explanation and make it simple? Okay, so let's look at this chart. It's very simple, easy, clear, right? So let's look at have. Yes, it's very nice, simple, right? So have, has, that's today's target, right? Have and has. When students look at this, they can see the difference, right? Okay, have, has. Oh, have, we have I, we, you, they, but has, we use she, he, it. Okay, this explains everything. 
right? And if you look at the next sentence, the ants have a cookie. The ant has a cookie. Ah, ants. So that's more than one ant, plural. The ant, that's one ant, right? So many ants, the ants, you use have. And the ant, one ant, you use has. Okay, very simple and clear, right? Compare this with the previous chart. This or this, which one do you prefer? Remember, you are a student, which one do you prefer? This or this? I'm sure you will prefer this. Okay, so let's make it simple. That's rule number one, okay? Don't try to explain grammar using difficult words, right? Let's try to make it simple and clear and easy. Now let's look at this. Let's look at the first sentence. We have hot dogs. I have sandwiches. Does it make any sense? What hot dogs? What sandwiches? Right? We don't have any context, so we don't know what's going on. Doesn't make sense. Right? We have hot dogs. I have sandwiches. So what? Okay, it doesn't make any sense. So if this is the case, what can you do? What can you do? We need pictures, yes, we need some clue. We need a context, right? So rule number two, provide context. Okay, provide context. So let's look at this picture. What's happening? Children are having a picnic, right? Let's look at these two girls. We have hot dogs. Ah, now I understand. So these two girls, they have hot dogs, right? And look at this girl. I have sandwiches. Ah, now I know. So this girl has sandwiches, right? It's a lot easier, right? Now you know what's going on. Now you can understand the sentence, right? So providing pictures or other clues, providing context is very important. Okay, and then you can talk about the pictures. Yes, visual clues, that's very important for young children. Okay, so what can you see in the picture? Can you see a monkey? Yes, there's a monkey here, right? Number two, what does the monkey have? The monkey has a what, plate, right? Number two, the monkey has a plate. Okay? Yes, colorful pictures, right? You can catch students' attention. That's right. Okay, so you can talk about the picture. You can provide context, right? And then you can introduce the grammar target, which is have and has. Okay, that's the grammar target today. Okay? Can you see the dog? Can you see the dog here? There's a dog, right? The dog has two apples, right? So you can talk about pictures. Okay, so number two, provide context. Okay, now let's move on. This student says, it's boring, right? Look at this page. How do you feel? It's boring, right? Yeah, do you want to do this page? Not really, yes, it's too much. Right, yes, it's very boring, right? Yes, oh uh, yeah, boring for both teacher and the student. That's right, right? And students will say, teacher, I don't want to do this. I'll never use these structures, right? So boring. How can I finish all this? Yes, overwhelming. So what can you do? How can you make this more effective? Maybe you can divide the exercises into, um, you know, different chunks. 
Yes? Or maybe you can provide some pictures, right? Yes, that's good. Very good. I guess some good answers there. Yes. Or you can connect to real life. Then it becomes more interesting because it's real life. Right? Student can relate to this. As soon as you see this picture, you know, it's very interesting. Now let's look at number one. A rabbit can jump. It can jump. Okay? You can see the cute rabbit and, you know, children like rabbits. So they'll be interested in this picture. Right? And they can see um, some children as well. Let's look at number five. The children can run. They can run. And you can compare that with this baby. The baby can't run. He can't run. Yes, real context, real life, and real picture. Okay, that makes things much more interesting. Okay, so connect to real life. Very important. Now, let's look at this situation. The student says, it's not related to me. It's got nothing to do with me. So why do I do this? Okay, now let's look at the sentences. Fill in the blanks with have or has. Number one, I, what's the answer? Have, I have a new bike. There's a picture, right? You can see the new bike. But it's not, this I, it's not really I, right? It, you cannot relate this to yourself. I don't have a new bike. I don't have any bike, right? So you cannot really relate this to you. Number two, we have or has. Have, we have six pencils. So you can do the activity, you can do this exercise, but doesn't mean anything to you, right? We, do we have six pencils? Yeah, so even though we provide the pictures, it's still not very interesting. It's not very motivating for the students because you know, it's not related directly to them. Yeah, we don't have six pencils, right? I don't have a new bike. So what can you do if this is the case? That's right, yes. You can personalize. Okay, you can personalize the activities so that students can relate themselves to the grammar structure that they learn. So let's look at this one. What do you have? Circle and write have or don't have. Okay, so let's look at the pictures. We have boots, right? Hiking boots, um, a sleeping bag, backpack, a hat, and a tent. Okay, so students can think, okay? Do I have hiking boots? If they do, they will say, I have boots. If they don't, they'll say, I don't have boots. Yes, that's right, students describe their own things. Number two, I have a sleeping bag or I don't have a sleeping bag. Okay, so they can talk about themselves. So personalization activity is very important, right? If they use the grammar structure for themselves, right, to talk about themselves, then they will remember, okay, because it's about them. Okay, so personalize, very important. Okay, do you have hiking boots? Do you have a sleeping bag? I have hiking boots, and I have a backpack, I have a hat, but I don't have a tent, and I don't have a sleeping bag, and I want to buy a tent. Uh, for this summer, I want to go camping. If, you know, if this um, pandemic is, you know, the situation gets a little bit better, then I want to go camping. So anyway, so you can talk about, um, you know, your own things. Um, you can personalize the activity. Okay? 
Now let's look at um, another situation. Okay, look at this. Too much, right? And it's too repetitive. And it's too mechanical. Now let's look at some um, activities here. Let's look at number two. I smell, smells the ocean. The smell is the correct answer, right? Number three, we see, sees the teacher. So see is the correct answer. Okay, so if you um, ask your students to do something like this, you know what they do? They just look at the subject, and then they'll just look at the verb, they'll choose the correct answer, and that's it. They will never read the whole sentence, unless you ask your students to read the whole sentence. So they'll just go through, okay, I smell, we see, it weighs. You take, my mother sends. They'll just do it like that because it's very mechanical. You don't have to read the whole sentence. You don't have to get the meaning, right? So these kind of um, exercises are necessary, right? Because you need to do the practice, right? It is necessary and they are useful. But if you only do something like this, then students will not uh, worry about getting the meaning across. Okay? So, you want your students to read the whole sentence and understand the meaning as well. It's not only about the verb forms. Okay? The important thing is to understand, to get the meaning, right? That's the communicative approach. Okay? So, what can you do if this is the situation? Make it meaningful. Okay, you can make it meaningful. It's the you know, same type of exercise, but by adding something extra, right, you can make it more meaningful. So let's look at number one. The end have has six legs at the end one end so which one have or has has okay the end has six legs yes or no is this correct correct sentence right i mean the meaning think about the meaning the end had six legs yes right it's true so you have to check yes okay so here, students will have to read the whole sentence, right? They'll have to understand the meaning of the sentence because they'll have to do this part, yes or no, right? They'll have to think about the meaning. Let's look at number two. Elephants have has small ears, okay? Have or has? Elephants, it's more than one, so you have to go have. Right? Elephants have small ears. Yes or no? Elephants have or has small ears? Yes? No, right? Look at this picture. Can you see two elephants there? Mommy elephant and the baby elephant, right? They have big ears, right? So you have to do the um, grammar activity and then you have to think about the meaning, okay? So you can turn um, the activity into a more meaningful activity, right? By adding yes or no here, okay? Yes, they have big ears, right? So you can look at the um, picture as well, and then you can talk about the picture. And elephants have long nose. Right? So you can talk about the nose as well and use have in the sentence. Okay? Do you like this activity? Yes. Let's try one more then. Okay? Uh, let's look at number three. Chickens have has big wings. Okay? Chickens. S there. So it's have. Okay, chickens have big wings, yes or no? 
Let's look at this picture here. Big wings, right? Yeah, I think it's big. So you check yes. So you can go um, through the activities like this. Right? It's meaningful now. Now let's look at number seven. Okay, number seven is very interesting. I have has a great smile. Okay, I, so you use have. I have a great smile. This is personalization. Okay, when students do this part, they'll have to think about uh, themselves. I have a great smile. Yes or no? Do I have a great smile? Yes? No? Okay, so you can check. Do you have a great smile? Yes? And you can check yes. Number eight, we have has a good class. So we, so you use have, we have. Do we have a good class now? Do we have? Oh, thank you. I have a great smile. Yeah, thank you. Do we have a good class? Yes, I think we have a good class. I hope. Okay. So this is personalization, number seven and number eight. Okay, so it's more meaningful. So now let's move on to um, another situation, okay? So here, make it communicative. Okay, make it communicative. What do I have in my bag? You can use the real objects to make uh, things more interesting, right? So, this is my bag here. Look at the picture. This is my bag. What do I have in my bag? I have a book. I have a notebook. And I have a pencil. Okay, I have these things in my bag. So use real objects. And if you don't have real objects, you can use flashcards as well. Okay? What do you have in your bag? What do you have in your bag? Do you have a pen? Do you have glasses? Okay, so you can ask your students. Okay, if you are having offline class, you can look at um, the students' bags together and then see, you know, what they have in their bag. Okay. Today, I have a special friend. Okay. So, this is my friend. Her name is Chip. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Chip. Okay, Chip is uh, one of the characters from our kindergarten course book, Little Hands. Okay, so Chip is a special guest today. Okay, and Chip has a bag. This is Chip's bag. Okay, now let's look inside. Okay, Chip has a lot of things in um, her bag. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, Chip has... She has an apple. No, sorry, no fish, no fish. <laughs> Chip has an apple. And Chip has an orange. And Chip has two bananas. Yes, Chip is vegan. <laughs> Chip likes fruit. Yes, Chip likes fruit. So Chip has two bananas. And he has... A chocolate bar and he has she has a cup a paper cup she has a paper cup and she has a fork okay she's um, having a picnic so after this webinar we'll go to a park and have a picnic that's why um, she has all these things um, in her bag okay uh, so it's not chocolate pie it's um, it's a cereal bar <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Chip has all these things in his bag, okay? Um, we did a lot of repetition just now, okay? We said um, she has an apple, she has an orange, she has bananas, she has a chocolate bar, she has a fork, she has a cup, okay? A lot of repetition, but 
it was not boring, was it? It was fun, all right? Because you are using real objects and you are using a toy, right? A character to make the class more interesting. And, and we want to find out what's in Chip's bag, right? So these things make um, grammar lesson more interesting, I think, right? Using real objects and like a game. Okay. But actually, students are practicing a lot. They keep making the sentences. They are doing a lot of drilling, right? She has, she has, she has. Okay, so now uh, we'll play another game. Okay, a guessing game. Now you saw all the things in Chip's bag. Okay, can you remember everything? Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six things. Yes, six things. Okay, remember six things? Okay, now she thinks the bag is too heavy. So she's going to carry only one item. Okay, so now there's only one thing in Chip's bag. Okay, so what does she have now? Can you ask me? Does she have... Does she have a cup? No, sorry, no. Does she have bananas? No, sorry. Does she have some water? No, does she have an orange? Yes, she has an orange. That's right. So you keep asking, right? Does she have, does she have, does she have? You do a lot of repetition, right? But it doesn't feel like it's repetition, right? Students think uh, that they are playing a game and it's a guessing game. So they'll have to use their um, brain. Okay? They'll have to remember the vocabulary. They'll have to remember the items and then they'll have to use, does she have, does she have? Okay, so you can play a simple game like this, but it's very fun, right? So now let's move on. So make it communicative. So you can play a game. This is Chip's mystery bag. Or you can have your students do a presentation. Or does she have makeup? No, sorry, um, Chip doesn't have any makeup, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you can have your students do a presentation, okay? So they can draw what they have in their bag, and then they can write, I have a, okay? And then they can do a presentation. Or they can show, you know, their bag, and then they can take out the items one by one, and then say, I have a, you know, I have a pencil, I have a notebook. Okay, so you can do a presentation as well. So you can turn um, the activities into um, something more communicative. Okay. Now let's look at this page. How do you feel when you look at this page? How do you feel? Too much. Terrible. Yes. Tired, sleepy, sad, bored. Yeah, I get all these answers. Already tired, right? Yeah, you, you haven't even started, but you feel tired already, right? That's how your students feel when they see something like this, right? Too many exercises. Headache, yes, it gives a headache. Yes. Happy, oh, someone likes um, mechanical activities. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I said this before, right? Doing mechanical activities is not a bad thing. You sometimes have to do that so that you can remember the forms, right? But if you do it all the time, then you know it might get you might get bored. Okay. So um, in that case, you can play little games like this. Okay, communicative activities. Yeah, depends on the students, right? Yes. Okay. So, make it fun. Right? You can always make something fun and interesting. Okay, so now let's look at this um, 
activity. This is actually a worksheet from our My First Grammar. Roll and write have or has. Okay, so you need a dice. Okay. So if you get uh, an odd number, one, three, five, you have to use have. Okay, if you get an even number, two, four, six, then you have to use has. Okay, now let's look at number one. I blank a square watch. Okay, so you have to use have or has, but you have to roll the dice first. Okay, now let's try. I have six. Okay, six. So you have to use has. I has a square watch. Is that correct? No, that's wrong. Okay, so you lose a turn. And next student will do it again. Okay, so it's Chip's turn now. Okay, Chip will roll the dice. Okay, and Chip got three. Okay, so it's number three here. Then you can use have. I have a square watch. Is that correct? Yes, so Chip gets one point. Okay, so you play like that. Maybe we can, we can try it again. Let's try number two. She blank long hair. Okay, you already know that. Your students would already know that she has long hair, right? But they cannot write has. They'll have to play this game. Okay, so let's roll the dice. I get one have she have long hair no that's not right okay now chips turn two so has she has long hair chip one again right chip gets the point so you can play a simple activity like this okay it's more fun right Okay, so you can turn the worksheet into a game. Now, some of you, your students will probably say, I forgot, I don't remember. Do your students say that? My students always say that, you know. Teacher, I don't know, I don't remember. I forgot. Yes. Um, if you look at this um, contents page of a grammar book, okay, usually grammar book um, have this kind of syllabus, okay? You have nouns, and then you have pronouns, and then you have adjectives, okay? So when you study nouns, you know, you study very hard, okay? You do all the um, exercises and you try to remember the rules, right? And when you finish noun, you move on to pronouns, and then you do pronouns, right? You study very hard. You learn all the rules and the forms. But you forget all the nouns. Does that happen to you? Yes. And when you move on to adjectives, what happens? You forget nouns. You forget pronouns. You only do adjectives. What's the reason? Why is it like that? That's because there's no link between the units. Okay, there's no link between nouns, pronouns, and adjectives. So you just forget. Okay, so what can we do? Link and review. Okay, this is very important. Link and review. Okay, so let's look at this one. Unit one, you do nouns. And you need to, you do pronouns, but you still review nouns and you make a link between pronouns and nouns and you practice together. Okay? And then you need three, you learn the new target adjectives, but you still review nouns and you still review pronouns. And then you make a link and practice together. Right? This will help students remember because they'll be recycling, they'll be making a link, and then they'll be reviewing together. This will help students remember. Okay? 
they can review. Help students recycle, reuse, and retain the grammar points and check their understanding of the target grammar points. Okay. So um, in my first grammar, we have this um, special page called Link and Review. Okay. So um, if you look at these lessons, okay, it shows you um, what lessons are linked and reviewed together in this section. So lesson A, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's all linked and reviewed together on this page. And we even provide a reference chart for the teachers. Okay, so when the students do um, these exercises, if they have a wrong answer for number two, right, then you can check the chart. Number two is from lesson nine. So you can go back to lesson nine and do some review and then come back to this activity. Okay, and if your students have some problems with number four, okay, then check the um, chart number four is lesson 11. So you can do some review on lesson 11. Okay, so this is a very useful chart for the teachers and we provide this chart for link and review unit. Okay, yes, cumulative review. And um, number nine, use spiral syllabus. Okay, so spiral syllabus repeats and reviews target grammar points throughout the lessons. All the targets are reviewed and expanded and linked with new targets and help students easily consolidate and expand their knowledge of grammar. Okay, that's spiral syllabus. So, um, most grammar books follow linear syllabus. Okay, linear is just one line, okay, one flat line. You need one noun, you need two pronouns, oh sorry, you need three adjectives and you need four verbs. There's no linking between the units. But spiral syllabus, okay, as I said before, we always link the previous targets and practice together, review, and then expand. Okay, so this is a spiral syllabus. Spiral is, you know, it goes around and around and around. Okay, that's spiral syllabus. So my first grammar follows spiral syllabus. Okay, and um, to have spiral syllabus, you have to design the syllabus systematically, very carefully. Okay, you have to make the link, right? So it's a very um, long process and very complicated process, but you know, it's very useful for the teachers. Okay, so let's move on to um, the next slide. So here I'll show you an example. This is my first grammar book one, book two, and book three. And these are the targets. Okay, so my first grammar one, we have nouns and pronouns. And when you move on to my first grammar two, we have nouns again. But we expanded it. Okay, we made a link and we expanded. And if you look at book three, we have pronouns and nouns again. And we expanded it even more. Right? But we still have the link and review. Okay, this is how um, my first grammar is designed. So let's do some review. I said link and review is important. So let's do some review of the session. Okay, so uh, for effective grammar lessons for EFL students, remember we talked about ESL and EFL. Okay, we know the difference. Okay, so uh, number one, make it simple. Number two, provide context. And number three, connect to real life. Number four, personalize. Number five, make it meaningful. And number six, make it communicative. Number seven, make it fun. And number eight, link and review. And number nine, use spiral syllabus. Okay, that's what we talked about today. And I also talked about traditional approach and communicative approach. Okay, so it's good to mix those two approaches, I think, uh, but it all depends on your situation. Okay, but after this session, maybe when you teach your grammar class today or tomorrow, maybe you can try um, a few activities, communicative activities. 
Okay, maybe you can make um, your grammar lesson easier, more fun, right? By following communicative approaches. Okay. So, grammar is important. We all agree on that. Grammar lessons do not have to be boring or difficult. Grammar lessons can be fun and easy. Okay, so that's the whole uh, point of today's uh, webinar. And let's move on to, um, let's skip a few slides. And then um, I have some important information. We have online resources for My First Grammar. We have an ebook and other online activities and tests. And we also have downloadable materials. Okay. So we have um, student book, workbook, and teacher's manual. Okay. And in the teacher's manual, we have worksheets and tests. You can also download them uh, from our website or eSmart class. Okay. And we provide eBooks for free for the, the book users. Okay. If you use My First Grammar book, then you can also use eBooks. If you have to teach online, okay, you need the ebooks, right? If you have the ebooks, teaching online will be more um, easier because you can share your screen, you can share the book with your students, and students can do their work in their um, physical book, right? And then you can check the answers together. Okay, um, we have um, answers for answer keys for the um, uh, ebooks. Okay, so if you use our ebooks, you can show the answers to your students, right? Then they can check the answers, or you can check the answers together with your students. Okay? And um, if you turn on YouTube, as I said before, we will record this whole session and we'll upload the video on our YouTube. So, um, yeah, check out our YouTube. Okay? And do you still feel like this? I hope not, right? I hope you are happy and ready to try um, communicative activities, right? And have fun in your grammar class. Thank you, our partners um, and teachers for joining the webinar. If you need more information about My First Grammar, you can contact our partners, okay? So these are the partners in Asia, and these are the partners in Latin America, okay? And we have more webinars. Okay. May 20, May 21st, we have uh, a webinar on phonics. Okay. Check the time. Okay. And another webinar on the 27th and 28th, right? That's um, speaking and listening. Okay. So check the time. And happy Teacher's Day, May 15th. This Friday is Teacher's Day in Korea. So um, happy Teacher's Day, everyone. Um, Look at this, a teacher takes a hand, opens a mind, and touches a heart. Okay, and have fun in your grammar class. And keep in touch with eFuture. Check out our Facebook and uh, YouTube. Okay, and I'll see you again. Okay, thank you very much for joining the webinar. If you have any questions, you can leave the questions now. I'll try to answer the questions. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. See you again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, goodbye. Oh, the best webinar. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Yes, happy Teacher's Day, everyone. Okay, thank you for joining. Yes, goodbye. And good night. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Peru. Thank you. Thank you. Hug, a yeah, huge hug. Thank you. Lots of hugs and kisses. Thank you. Yes, hope to see you again. Yeah, enjoy your lunch. Yes, yes. I'll go and have my bananas and um, oranges. Yes, I'll um, share the video links.
it will be uploaded on our YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, and Weibo, yes. YouTube and Weibo. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone um, in Latin America. It's very late um, over there now, right? 10 o'clock. Good night. Certificates. Oh, okay, some teachers are asking about certificates, so we are trying to arrange certificates, right? Not for this one, but for the future ones. And we will let you know. Okay? Yeah. I think having a certificate will be a good thing. So we are working on that now. No, not only fruits, I'll have something else as well. Um, yeah, I'll have some, I don't know, I'll have a big lunch. I talked for one hour, so I'm kind of hungry. I'll have a big lunch. Okay, no questions? Yes, 10 o'clock in Colombia. Yes, it's very late. Thank you for joining the webinar and good night. Yes, 10 o'clock in Peru as well. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now I'll turn off the uh, video. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you again.